Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I am going to be checking out a really awesome device that I can't wait to show you, the JingPad A1 from Jingling. They were awesome enough to send this tablet over to the studio for me to give you guys a first look on this channel, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Now, before we get into that, I do want to let you guys know about a few things, a few disclaimers, if you will. First of all, just like with all of the content on my channel, I retain full creative control over this video, and Jingling was not allowed to see this video before you guys on YouTube as well as my Patreon audience. You guys get to see it first, so they are seeing it for the first time along with you guys. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that this tablet right here is not final. So that's why I'm labeling this as a preview video and not a review video. So all of the opinions that I'm going to give you are my opinions of this tablet at its current point in development. So when the final version does come around, I will be receiving that unit. And at that time, I will give you guys my final opinion. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do in this video is give you guys my first impressions. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, first of all, let's talk about the packaging and unboxing, if you will. I'm not really sure if the packaging is final at this state. So if you were to order this tablet for yourself when it's finished, I don't really know if the packaging is going to look like this or if they're going to make any changes. So obviously what you are seeing is the packaging at this current point in time. That being said, the packaging itself gave me, well, hope because it looks professional. And regardless of whether or not the packaging is final, the fact that it looks professional at this current point in time, that's a good sign. The unit that I was sent was sent over with a standard case and a keyboard case as well. My understanding is that this particular tablet supports the use of a stylus pen, but unfortunately I wasn't sent a stylus pen along with this unit, so I wasn't able to test that. But I was really happy that they included the keyboard case along with the unit that they sent me, because that was definitely something that I was looking forward to checking out. Also in the box there's a USB cable and a power brick as well, so standard stuff there. But anyway, the packaging overall is decent. I'm not really sure if it's going to change between now and final release, but honestly, I don't feel like it needs to because it gets the job done. At this point, let's talk about the build quality because I know a lot of you guys are really curious what the build quality is like and how it stacks up. And have to say, so far, I'm really impressed with this. As far as the weight, it weighs about the same as an iPad Air, which is the only other tablet that I have in the studio right now. So it's really easy to compare it to that. And honestly, I think the um, weight and the build quality is very close to the iPad Air, surprisingly. I mean, this is a Linux tablet we're talking about. So the fact that I can even compare it to an iPad at all, that's pretty surprising to me. And honestly, I didn't expect the build quality to be this great. Usually it takes several hardware revisions over the course of years to get to a really good state. Unless, of course, you're one of the duopolies in this space with many millions of dollars to waste. Here we have a tablet that has great build quality. It's very solid. And that's an amazing thing to be able to say about something that runs Linux. Because let's face it, 
Us Linux people were accused of many things, but being a priority is not usually one of them. I actually kind of feel spoiled by the build quality because it's just so good. It's pretty much flagship level at this point. I mentioned the iPad Air earlier, and compared to that one, it's a bit smaller, and like I mentioned, I think it weighs pretty much about the same. At least, I'm not able to tell the difference on my end, and I have the two devices side by side. The chassis is simple, but effective. There's a fingerprint reader, volume controls, a USB Type-C port that doubles as not only the way that you charge the unit, but it's also compatible with USB on-the-go devices as well, so pretty much your standard stuff. One thing to note is that there's no headphone jack on this unit at all, but then again, the iPad Air doesn't have one either, so I guess it's even. And that's not really a problem for me because it actually features Bluetooth 5.0, so if you have a Bluetooth headset, you should be all set. So now let's talk about the screen quality. I'm not really sure how well you'll be able to see this in the frame, but I am going to overlay some B-roll that'll hopefully give it a better representation than what you're probably seeing right now. But overall, I really like the screen quality. It's a 2K screen with a 4x3 aspect ratio, and that's definitely decent. Everything on the display is clear and easy to read, and it has plenty of brightness. It's an AMOLED display if you are curious, and the resolution of this display is 2368 by 1728. And for those of you that are curious, the brightness is rated at 350 nits. And in my opinion, the brightness is more than adequate. In fact, it's one of the brighter devices that I have in the studio. Next, I want to talk about the keyboard case that came with the unit. My unit actually came with two cases, a standard case, and also the one that you're seeing here that features a keyboard and a trackpad. The trackpad actually doesn't function at all at this point in its development cycle, but my understanding is that it's expected to be fully enabled when the device is final. For now, you can use a USB mouse until the final build arrives. The keyboard case is magnetized, and the tablet attaches to it very firmly. You definitely won't have to worry about the tablet falling out of the case. Now, the thing is, with the tablet attached to the keyboard case, it becomes very top-heavy and can easily fall over. To fix that, though, there's actually a prop that's built into the case that will prevent it from tipping over. At first, I didn't even notice that it was there, but I'm glad it is. It'll definitely keep the device from falling over. Although I wasn't able to test the trackpad yet, the keyboard itself functions exactly as it should. The keys feel nice, though the smaller size of the keys takes a bit of getting used to for me. That's not really a big deal, though, as all keyboards of this size are going to have smaller keys, so that's to be expected. And I would argue that the portability of this tablet and the keyboard more than makes it worth it. Let's talk about the operating system, Jing OS. That's what ships with a Jing pad, Jing OS. And like I mentioned, this is a first impressions video of the Jing pad A1 tablet, but it's also a first impressions video of Jing OS itself because, well, I haven't had a chance to check it out until now. In particular, my unit shipped with version 0.9 of this distribution, and that version is considered a preview build. I was told that this particular version of Jing OS is not considered stable currently, but a stable release is expected soon. Now, even though they don't consider it stable, on my end, I haven't had a single crash or error message at all during my testing so far. So if they don't consider it stable, and I'm finding it to be stable, then I think that's probably a good sign. In regards to actually using Jing OS, I found it to be very impressive when it comes to how easy to use this distro seems to be. I didn't really need to acclimate at all. I just guessed at how to navigate it, and it worked exactly the way that I thought it would. Whenever I open up an application, it opens in full screen mode, as would be expected for a tablet. And there's no close or minimize buttons at all in the UI. It's completely controlled by touch. So to switch to another open app, I just simply swipe up from the bottom, and that works just fine. I didn't read any instructions when it comes to how to switch between open apps. That was just the first thing that I tried, and it worked. So for the most part, I find it pretty much self-explanatory. It's super easy to use, and anyone that's familiar with iOS will definitely feel right at home here. In fact, Jing OS is about as simple as it can get. When you install an app, an icon for it appears on the home screen. To change settings, there's a settings icon inside the panel, and that exposes all of the typical options that you might want to tweak. 
So, like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. I could definitely see some room for additional features, such as having folders of apps so you can categorize them, and also it didn't seem to automatically detect my printer, and that's something that Pop! OS is able to do, so I'd imagine that would be probably fairly easy for them to add. The technology to automatically add printers is already there, so they just have to add it. And for all I know, those features might already be in the process of being added because, again, this is the preview build of Jing OS, so I have no expectation for it to be feature complete at this point. Now, the only issue that I ran into was that every now and then when I opened up an app, it would actually show it in a different language. Out of the box, when I first powered it on, it didn't ask me to choose a language or even set up a user. So I assume that the final build of this tablet will probably have you walk through some sort of wizard or option screen when you first power it on. But since mine came with a preview build, it didn't do that. I fully expect that issue will more than likely be solved in the final build, and I'll definitely be doing a review of the final version of this unit as soon as it's made available. So definitely stay tuned for that. Overall, I think Jing OS is very user-friendly. If the preview build is any indication, I think it's going to be very well received. And for those of you that are curious, Jing OS is actually built on top of Ubuntu 2004 LTS, so that also means that it's going to have compatibility for your Ubuntu apps as well, which is pretty cool. Now at this point, I want to talk about some use cases that I had a chance to test out on this unit. And actually, Jingling claims that this is the first Linux tablet that can be your daily driver. And that's a very bold claim. In my experience so far with the DVT edition that I received, is that it's very far along, and that claim might not actually be as bold as it might seem. In fact, if nothing else, I would already tell you that I think the Jingpad is further along than any Linux tablet that I have used so far. Now, the first thing that I tried out on this device was browsing the internet. On the build that I received, Chromium was the default browser, and it works just as well as any browser should work. It's desktop Chromium, after all. The only thing that didn't feel natural when it comes to browsing on this tablet, compared to other tablets, is that on the browser you have to use the scroll bar in order to scroll up and down on a web page. Now, on other tablets, for example, you can just drag the web page from any position up and down to scroll. You don't actually have to scroll just on the scroll bar. Now, that's a very minor complaint, and I'm not even sure if it's going to be a complaint at all in the final version, but I got used to it very quickly, so I didn't find it off-putting at all. In fact, the Jingpad has 8 gigs of RAM, so that, combined with the fact that it comes with a desktop browser, means that browsing on the internet on this tablet is just really good. I even went ahead and loaded Firefox on it, and that worked out well for me as well. Now, since I just got onto the subject of apps, the Jingpad is able to run both Linux and Android apps. And since JingOS is based on Ubuntu, being able to run Linux apps is, well, a given. But the ability to run Android apps might actually be a game changer. The only reason why I say that it might be a game changer is because there's a small number of Android apps that are supported at the moment, but that could very well change when the device is finalized. On my end, I randomly decided to install Candy Crush. The Android version of that is available for this tablet. And you know what? It worked fine. So yeah, Android app support definitely works. I would definitely like to see more Android apps added because that one thing alone can make it possible for a Linux device like this to enter the mainstream. And if that's harnessed properly, it could actually change the entire game when it comes to Linux adoption. Let's take a moment to just think of the possibilities here. I mean, I literally have a device right here that I can SSH into and run an apt install command to install an Ubuntu package. And this same device can run Android apps as well. The thing is, many people that have trouble switching to Linux will often mention app compatibility as the reason why they can't make the jump. If Jingling harnesses the ability to run Android apps more effectively, then that's a major burden that'll be lifted from a lot of people. I'm going to be very interested to see how Android app support plays out with the final version. Now, I should back up a little bit because I'm talking about additional applications and I haven't even shown you guys how you install additional apps yet. The primary method of installing apps on the Jingpad is the included store app. It's very simple to use. You just search for an app you want to install. Once you find it, you tap on it to read some information about that app. And then you could tap the Get button, and that's it. So installing apps in that regard couldn't be easier. 
One issue that I did have with the store, though, is that there weren't many applications that are featured there. That might give someone the false impression that there aren't many Linux apps available, which isn't true. For example, I couldn't find LibreOffice in the store at all, but I was able to install it via the terminal, no problem. But despite that, an icon for LibreOffice appeared right there on the desktop, so even though I bypassed the store, they still respected my decision, and they put an icon for LibreOffice right there on the desktop, and that's pretty cool. So it's not that there aren't many apps available, it's just that the store app doesn't really seem to do a good job of showing you all of the possibilities, at least not yet. When the final version of this tablet comes out, I'm going to be very interested to see how many apps are shown here because they could have it fixed by the time it comes out. If nothing else, you have multiple ways of installing software on this tablet. They don't force you to use only one means of installing apps, and I think that's actually a benefit. That being said, I was able to do pretty much everything I wanted to do when it comes to apps. Sure, I don't have very hard requirements to reach here, but when I receive the final version of the device, I'm going to take a deeper look at the app ecosystem around this tablet, and I'll let you know how practical it would be to use this as your daily driver, especially from an app perspective. Overall, I really love this device so far. It has a flagship level build quality, which is amazing for something that's just starting out. The operating system is very easy to use. The keyboard is great. And the fact that I can run Linux apps alongside Android apps, that's amazing to me. As far as whether or not this particular device can become my daily driver, so far, I think that's a very real possibility. And I can't believe I'm saying that. And that makes me even more excited for the final review when I go to record it. In fact, whether or not this particular device is going to be daily driver capable, that's going to be a major part of that review, a major focus. And again, like I mentioned, you'll see it here on my channel as soon as I have it done. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this particular preview video, the Jingpad itself so far, and especially let me know if there's any test case that you would like to see me test on the final version of this particular piece of hardware, and you never know, I might actually test that in the actual final review. With that said, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.